What's going on guys, CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu 19.10 on your Raspberry Pi 4. Canonical has recently added Pi 4 support and it actually runs really good. Now I do have this overclocked to 2 GHz on the CPU and 650 MHz on the GPU. I'll also show you how to do that. But keep in mind you will need sufficient cooling on your Raspberry Pi 4 to reach these clocks. Overall the experience has been great and as you can see here I'm actually running Ubuntu with GNOME installed. There are several different desktop variants that we can install and I would suggest using Lubuntu. It's just a much lighter weight desktop and it should perform much better on the Raspberry Pi 4. But I will give you four different options that we can install after we get this image flashed. And all four of those options will be running 19.10 but will have a different desktop interface. So you can experiment over time, you can figure out which one is the best for you on your Raspberry Pi 4. Now that we have official Pi 4 support with 19.10, a lot of distros will be switching over. Like one of my favorites, Manjaro, but that's based on Arch. They just released their 19.10 build and it runs amazingly on the Raspberry Pi 4, especially with this overclock. And I have made a video in the past on Manjaro. If you're interested, I can make another one on 19.10 because I think it's a whole different story when it comes to the Raspberry Pi 4. With official support for the Pi 4, this is just the start. In the next week or the next month, we're going to see a lot of different distros ready to be installed on the Raspberry Pi 4. But this tutorial will get you up and running. There are a few things we need to note before we get started here. Obviously, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 4. A 1, 2, or 4 gigabyte model will work. I recommend at least the 2, but if you can pick up the 4, it's going to be much better. And on the initial install, I definitely recommend using Ethernet. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I'm not even going to set up Wi-Fi until we get into the desktop itself. So I'll be plugging in the Ethernet to install everything. We're also going to need a separate computer to install the image to our SD card. I'm going to be using a Windows computer, but you can do this on Mac, Windows, or Linux. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First things first, I've placed my SD card and an SD card reader in my PC. It's a 32 gigabyte micro SD card by PNY. I'll leave links in the description in case you need to pick one up. All links for everything mentioned will be in the description. First things first, we need to download the Ubuntu image. This is the Ubuntu server image. Right here, we have a 32 bit version and a 64. I've tested 64, but I keep getting crashes on the initial install. You can go ahead and try it if you'd like, but in this video we're going to be working with the 32-bit version. If we scroll down a little bit on this page, we can see there's a few different desktops we can install. Xubuntu, Lubuntu, and Kubuntu. I recommend Lubuntu on the Raspberry Pi 4, but in this video I'm going to be working with stock Ubuntu, so we'll have the GNOME desktop installed right out of the box. But you can experiment if you'd like to. The next thing we're going to need is an application to allow us to flash this image to an SD card. We're going to be using Etcher. From the drop down here, as you can see, Linux, Mac, or Windows. I'm going to download the Windows version. And finally, we'll need Notepad++ if you want to do that overclock, and I definitely recommend doing it. It's really easy, and I will have a text file linked in the description. All you have to do is copy and paste to your config.txt, and I'll show you how. We'll download the latest version. And as soon as all of this is finished downloading, I'm going to place it on my desktop for easy access. Okay, so everything's finished downloading on my end. We have the Ubuntu server image. This is the ARM HF 32-bit, Etcher, and Notepad++. Let's go ahead and flash that image. Start up Etcher. From within Etcher, we want to select the image we just downloaded right here, the Ubuntu 19.10 server. Make sure you have the correct SD card chosen and flash. Now this could take a little while depending on how fast your SD card is. Just let this finish up. When this is finished, we're going to add that overclock to the SD card and then we'll move over to the Raspberry Pi 4 and get everything set up and installed. When Etcher is finished, you might receive some warnings like this. Close these down and we can shut down Etcher. Now it's time to install Notepad++. Really easy to do. Gives you a little walkthrough. And we're not going to run it yet. We'll click finish. So in the description, I do have a text file that you can download. This will allow us to overclock our Raspberry Pi 4 to 2 gigahertz on the CPU and 650 megahertz on the GPU. I'm going to snap this over to the left hand side. Now I'm going to unplug my SD card and plug it right back in. We'll get some more warnings. But from right here, system boot, we need to find config.txt. Right click, 
edit with Notepad++. Now this is important because if you edit this with the regular Notepad built into Windows, there's a chance you could corrupt it. That's why we're using Notepad++. I'm going to snap this over to the right hand side. At the very bottom here, we're just going to add these lines. Over voltage 4, arm frequency equals 2000 and GPU frequency equals 650. Copy. Paste. Now keep in mind when you're doing this, you will need cooling on your Raspberry Pi 4. I'm actually using the Flirt case and it works fine at 2 gigahertz. I'll leave a link for that in the description. But if you want to use a small 20 millimeter heatsink and a fan, it should also work. File, save, and we can shut this down. We're now ready to move over to the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm going to plug my SD card in, HDMI, keyboard, and ethernet. Ethernet is important for this initial setup part because the desktop is around three gigs and we need to download it all on the Raspberry Pi. That way we don't have to do any extra setup. We just plug the ethernet in, type in what we need, and it'll start to download and install everything for us. So let's go ahead and move over to the Raspberry Pi 4. All right, so we're back at the Raspberry Pi with the freshly flashed SD card inserted. I have my keyboard, mouse, ethernet, and HDMI plugged in. This first boot does take a little while, about three to five minutes, so just let it finish up. When we reach this point here, we're gonna have to press enter, and it's gonna prompt us to sign in. Username is Ubuntu, password is Ubuntu. Again, it's gonna prompt us for the password, which is Ubuntu, and then it's gonna ask us to create a new password. I'm gonna create my new one. It's gonna ask me to verify that password, And now we're ready to install the desktop. I'm just going to type in sudo apt install ubuntu. Now keep in mind we're installing the stock ubuntu desktop, but you can substitute this with xubuntu, lubuntu, or klubuntu. It's just going to install a different desktop variant. Once you press enter, it's going to start the process, but after about 15 seconds, you'll be prompted to press Y for yes. So go ahead and press Y, enter, and now it's got to download everything. It's 2.1 gigs for the version we're downloading, and it takes around 15 to 20 minutes on my internet connection. And after a little time, you will receive a status bar, and when it reaches 100%, we're ready to start the desktop. And we can do this by typing in Start X. Now, you won't have to do this every time. After this initial install, every time you boot the Raspberry Pi 4 up, it's going to go directly to the desktop we installed. And here it is. There's just one last thing to do before we start using this desktop. We're going to restart one time. You can do that from the top right hand corner or you can open up a terminal by pressing Control alt t and type in sudo reboot. So now we'll just need to log in with the new password we created and it'll bring us right into the Ubuntu desktop. Help improve Ubuntu. I usually opt out of this. It's totally up to you. Just kind of click next here and next one more time. So if you're already connected over Ethernet, there's really nothing to worry about. You can start browsing and updating from here. But if you want to connect over Wi-Fi one more time, we can go up to the top right hand corner, Wi-Fi connections and find your connection from here. We already have some great pre-installed apps like Firefox, Thunderbird Mail, Files, Rhythmbox, LibreWriter, Ubuntu Software, Help, and Amazon. Not sure why they have Amazon pre-installed. But as you can see at the very bottom left hand corner we also have show applications. We can view frequent or all. There's some extra stuff here that's not listed over on the left hand side and if you want to install anything you can do it from terminal or Ubuntu software. And that's pretty much it. You now have Ubuntu installed on your Raspberry Pi 4. Every time we boot this thing up it'll bring us right into the login screen. We'll have to put our password in that we created when we installed Ubuntu. I definitely recommend checking out some YouTube tutorials on how to install different applications. This is basically going to work like an x86 PC with Ubuntu installed, but there's a lot of applications that won't be compatible because it's an ARM CPU and not an x86 CPU. But there's still a lot of stuff that's going to work in here. You can install RetroArch, you can install GIMP, you 
you can go into the Ubuntu software updater and find different applications that work here. Like you saw at the very beginning, I was running Doom. I also tested Quake and Old School RuneScape. All of them ran pretty well on this machine. Overall, it's been a pretty smooth experience, and it's really awesome to see Ubuntu 19.10 running on a Raspberry Pi. If you do end up experimenting with different builds, let me know what you think in the comments below. What's your favorite one? I really love the look of GNOME, but I know it's a little slow on this ARM chip, so I might do a full tutorial on Lubuntu also. And if you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on a Raspberry Pi 4, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.